And the rabbi said exactly what you said. Why would you want to convert? You could just follow these seven laws and you'll, you you know, you'll, you'll go to, to the world to come and yada, yada, yada. There's no need for you. You don't need to put these stresses of the, of our Torah upon yourself. They, they got that same rundown, which is completely opposite of what the halacha says to do. Right. Yeah. So the halacha tells you to tell them the opposite. Only Jews get a share in the world to come. And also in the Talmud itself, because the Ramam is quoting Rabbi Eliezer, Beit Shammai didn't believe Gentiles had a share in the world to come. So it was even a debate. The average Orthodox Jew will not eat a French fry from a questionable hashkacha, like from a questionable heksher, but at the same time will offer this flimsy belief system, which is not, you know, it's not for sure it's seven laws. It's only an opinion it's seven laws. Some say it's 30 laws. Some say Gentiles have to keep all laws. Maimonides says seven. Everyone ran that with Maimonides. They offer them this flimsy belief system, right? When they came from serious belief systems, Islam, Christianity is a serious belief system. There's structure, right? There's purpose. They offer them this just to toss them a bone, just to get them away from you. Judaism does not belong to these people, okay? To say that, who am I to let you into my religion? Judaism, the Torah belongs to whoever wants to keep the Torah. That means they're misappropriating our Torah, even though you're not Jewish. And it should frustrate people when in the name of Torah, they say that God has a special standard, right? Where he allows you to break, deliberately break his laws. Now, I get it, it's part of Jewish law. Yes, we adjudicate Gentiles who live in the land of Israel who do not want to convert by this standard, but to say, why would you want to convert when this is just as good as a lie? It's a lie, and even from a Talmudic perspective, what makes it a lie is that all the rabbis didn't agree with it. And even if the rabbis did agree with it, it would just be a, an opinion because it's not in the Torah. Every metaphysical idea that's agreed upon by the rabbis is only opinion if it doesn't appear in the Torah. Every halachic idea, halacha lemaisa, what you do, that's where their authority stems in, but not in the metaphysical. So I think pleasing God is a metaphysical concept. It's not a practical one, right? It's between you and God. I think if I was a betting man, I would put my money with what the Bible says on such an issue than what a rabbi says. But no one, no one asked themselves this question when they're, you know, taking their family away from the church or taking their family away from the mosque. They don't ask that question. They can God. I think if I was a betting man, I would put my money with what the Bible says on such an issue than what a rabbi says. But no one, no one asked themselves this question when they're, you know, taking their family away from the church or taking their family away from the mosque. They don't ask that question. They just got told by Tovia Singer or whoever is that you've been lied to, but they don't understand that the lie that supposedly Christianity may have told you doesn't even compare to the lie that this counter missionary is telling you. The supposed certainty that you get a share in the world to come is a lie, okay? okay? It's a lie if you say it's certain. It's a lie that, that it's better to be a Noahide than it is to be Jewish. For any reason, it's a lie. It's a lie that they're not unalived like for breaking any of the Noahide laws. It's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie, okay? And I'll tell you, Kabbalistic Judaism is a lot more, you know, problematic and lies a lot more than Christianity ever lied, 100%, okay? You think 27 books of the New Testament threaten me? No, <laughs> the hundreds of books that appear in Kabbalistic literature that talk about God having reproductive organs, right? Whether we have to pray to a certain aspect of God during Mincha and then during Marv to a different aspect. The idea, like the Arizal tells us that we have to do evil in the name of God in order to uncover the like certain sparks. The idea that some people are born superior to other people on this planet, right? Superior, that, that people are actually born with souls lower than an animal. That bothers me a lot more than 27 flimsy books of the New Testament, okay? Okay. And I, and I guarantee you, you're not gonna hear this on any show, but I put my money where my mouth is and I challenge any rabbi to debate me on this issue. They don't do it because they don't have the balls to do it. I am so glad I asked because I was, in my head, I was not clear. And I to was be like, fair, actually, back you and gotta... forth. is that different from reform? And I'm like, yeah, yeah wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Asha, welcome back. Hey, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov on your, uh, like, I don't know. Like, you to... Go ahead. Thank you. Um, Asha, uh, so you got, you got Grossman, uh, Rabbi Grossman to debate this issue with you. But that, yeah. Rabbi Grossman very... agreed to me, by the way. 